Today I want to talk about the even and odd identities found in trigonometry. These are excellent identities that allow us to handle situations where we're looking for the value of a negative angle. To see what I'm talking about, let me show you these identities. So here I have laid out the six basic trigonometric functions, and you can see that the argument in all of these is a negative angle. According to these identities, they tell us that all we have to do is look at the corresponding value that is a positive angle and do something with the sign. In some instances, we take the negative sign and move it out front, and in other instances, the negative sign is gone entirely. So in a nutshell, this really allows us to you know, take care of, say, the sine of negative 30 degrees. All we have to do is look at the sine for positive 30 degrees, and then just put a negative sign out front of whatever value you get. So these are really powerful, and they allow us to take care of negative angles. In most of the cases, we just simply move a negative sign out front, and in the, the case of cosine or secant, then we just take away the negative sign entirely and just find it as if it was a positive angle. Now, you may be looking at all of these different uh, identities here and say, well, great, this looks awesome, I got lots of tools to work with, but why is it that you can move out the negative sign sometimes, and other times, that it, it just disappears, it's gone? Well, to understand what's working in the background of these identities, it's best to look at the graph of, say, sine and cosine. Okay, so there's something very special about sine and cosine, and that has to do with their symmetry. Sine is symmetric with respect to the origin, and it is known as an odd function. Cosine is symmetric around the uh, y-axis, and it is known as an even function. Now the reason why that's important has to do with what happens when you start plugging in values. So imagine I'm working with sine, and I plug in something like a negative pi over 2. Now, what I would get when I plug it in is a negative 1. If I went down a little bit further and plugged in a positive pi over 2, then I would get a positive 1. And notice how I'm getting the same value, just 1 is negative and 1 is positive. And that's kind of what the identity is saying. You know, when I tried a negative pi over 2, I got the same value as plugging in a positive pi over 2, except for it was different in sign. And that works no matter what value you start plugging in. Let's say I plug in something way down here at a value, I'm going to say negative a. So of course I get something out, not really sure what it is, but I get something. If I go further down here and I plug in the positive a, I'll get the same value, but it's different in sign. So the sign, when I plugged in a negative a, is the same as taking the sign of a positive a, just different in sign. So you can see this works for any value that I, I go ahead and pick. And this is exactly what my identity is telling me. When I take care of a negative angle, it's the same as doing the positive angle, just change the sign. Now for cosine, it's even nicer than sine. So notice how everything is symmetric with respect to this y-axis. Which means, uh, you know, say I come along and I plug in something like a negative pi, I get a value like negative 1. Cosine of negative pi. If I plug in a value of positive pi, I still get the same value, negative 1. So this shows when I plug in negative pi or when I plug in positive pi, both will give me the same value. Now this works no matter what value you put in. Again, let's try something a little bit more general. Let me put in a negative a. Get something way up there. Then I run along here and I plug in a positive a. It goes up there. This value is exactly the same. All because of that symmetry. So again, this is exactly what my identity is telling me to do. If I try a negative angle, I'll get the same value I would as trying the positive of that same angle. So by remembering the symmetry in sine and cosine, you can see what to do with the negative sign. Now also, if you understand sine and cosine, you get all of the rest of the trigonometric, trigonometric functions. This is because of how they're related. Cosecant of some angle works exactly the same way.
because it's 1 over sine. Tangent of some angle works the same because it is sine over cosine. If I try a negative angle here in tangent, uh, the negative angle will come out of sine and it will disappear in cosine. The only one that acts exactly like cosine is the one that's related to it. So secant of an angle is equal to 1 over cosine. So that's why secant has the basically the same identity. You know, if I put a negative sign into secant, it's gone. Well, to get some more practice with these, let's go ahead and look at some examples and put these identities to work. So here I want to figure out the value of sine, cosine, secant, and tangent. And notice how in all of these I put in a negative angle. All right, so let's get started. So the sine of negative 30 degrees, according to identity, is the same as sine of 30 degrees. It just needs to be different in sine. So I'll put the negative sign in front. All right, so what is this equal to? Well, sine of 30 degrees is normally equal to 1 half. And my negative sign's out front, so this is a negative 1 half. All right, next one. Cosine of negative 45 degrees. Well, these are really nice because now I don't have to worry about that negative sign whatsoever. It's gone. And I can just look at the cosine of 45 degrees. So the square root of 2 all over 2. All right, next one. Secant. Now, in case you've forgotten what secant is and you're not sure whether you should move that sign out or just drop it, rewrite this using cosine. There we are. Now we can use the identity down here and just get rid of that sign. So let's see, cosine of 60 is 1 half. So I have 1 divided by 1 half, or just 2. All right, one last one. Tangent of negative 45 degrees. All right, so this one's a lot like sine. I need to move my negative sign out front. And now just figure out tangent of 45 degrees. Fortunately, that's a 1, and of course my negative sign is still there, so negative 1. So all you have to remember is, uh, say, the even and odd properties for sine and cosine, and how they're related to all of the rest of the trigonometric functions. Then you can easily figure out the value of some of your negative angles.